Okay, so this is about, rather than going through step by step and showing you every little bit of detail that I do in a painting, this is more about explaining the process of painting from start to finish. So it's going to be a fairly informal look at the way I work, so it'll show you some of the mistakes I make as well, not just uh, the finished thing. So this is about having fun with paint. We're not going to worry too much about pre-planning or pre-drawing, just seeing what the paint can do and editing while we go. I'm going to be using something called Atelier Interactive, which is an acrylic paint, but it's very different from any acrylic paint that you will have used before. You can go back to it at any point and get the colours that you've already put on working again. So you can go back, spray with water, re-blend everything, or even if it's been dry months, you can go back with an unlocking formula, re-spray it and get everything working again. So you can always go back and edit with this paint, so it's fantastic stuff. We're going to go out, find some good locations, take some sketchbooks with us and do a bit of work out there. Then we're going to come back to the studio, work those drawings up into bigger drawings, do some quick paintings and then finally work those into larger paintings, which will hopefully have some good results at the end. Last time we were working in Lincoln Cathedral and while I was there I did some charcoal sketches and I did some work on an iPad. We went back to the studio and worked up one of those charcoal sketches and did some more work on the iPad drawing. And what I'm going to do now then is start the final painting from the cathedral. First thing I want to do is work in all these dark areas in the foreground. So that's going to be our starting point. We're going to use pretty much one tone, burnt umber, and we're going to work in all the darks using that colour. I'm not working on a primed board. Because we've got a lot of light coming from behind in this image, I want the white of the canvas to show through and contrast with the dark paint that I'm going to put on to start with. So just working straight onto the weave of the canvas board for this. I'm just going to spray the whole of the canvas board very quickly with my water sprayer. One thing to remember with this paint is, although it unlocks with water and it is water mixable, you don't want to be dousing your paper or canvas. It's not like watercolour, so we don't want the paint to be dripping off or working like in washes. What we're trying to do is just get a very moist surface that will just stop the paint drying out too quickly. So that's what we're trying to achieve with our water sprayer. Just with a fairly large brush and just using burnt umber paint, we're going to quickly block in the basic composition of this picture. I know a lot of you looking at this will think, you know, how is he going to do this without doing any drawing work first? There's a lot of perspective in there, a lot of angles and quite a lot of detail to get in. Again, it's the same principle as with all painting. There's no point doing a really intricate pencil sketch and then covering the whole thing in paint, even if it makes you feel secure. So just working with paint, we can always go back and edit and change things if they don't look right. So there's no need necessarily to have all this drawn out before. I'm gonna make those drawing decisions with my brush while I'm working. So I've got this big dark column sort of running down this side of the picture. So. All I'm going to do is block that in with my brush. So we're just going to put those dark lines in to help us find our way around the picture. Just so I've got an idea of the perspective and the sense of these arches receding into the distance, I'm just going to think roughly where this dark back area is going to come in the painting and just put in a few marks where that area is going to be and then a line just coming down to there. Just having those two lines will just keep me focused on how these arches are going to recede into the distance. It's fairly dark along this top so just going to drag some colour from that line over this area of the picture. And where there's these bands of dark colour moving back in the photograph, I'm just going to use the edge just to move the paint in horizontal bands and just making that whole area slightly darker. And just thinking about where the darkest points in my picture are going to be. They're going to be here and here in this bottom corner. So just with some pure burnt umber, I'm just going to really darken that area, which will help give me a sense of the tonal values from the off. 
for me, I'm going to do as much of this painting as I can, just using the one colour to begin with. The colours are very similar, we've got a lot of darks, so it's really going to help me out in finding the tonal values. I'm just starting to make some quick marks with the end of my brush that are just going to help me decide where these arches are going to go. Like I said, when I was doing the sketch, the arches get closer and bunch up the further back they get. So I'm always bearing that in mind when I'm working with the paint here. One of my biggest concerns when doing this will be to make sure that these columns are straight and they look like they're standing up straight and they're not on a tilt. So I keep taking a look back and just checking while I'm working that everything's looking like it should. Remember, you know, just take five minutes every now and again to step back from your picture, get some distance between you and the painting, and that will really help you get a sense of what's working and what's not working. Because when you're up close, you don't really often get a sense of how the picture's working as a whole. So you do need to take time to step back and give it some thought before you go back in and make any alterations. So I've just finished working on those arches. I've got a nice dark line running down the inside of those arches and they're getting closer as they get back in the distance. So in our foreground, we've got quite a cool bluey gray. It's a kind of slate color uh, along these paving slabs in the bottom. So I'm gonna try and mimic that color now and having that cool blue will just help with the light that comes through these arches and help give us some soft shadows as we move back as well. So for the first time now, I'm gonna introduce a different color. All this was done using one color, burnt umber, so that just gives you an idea of what you can do by using one color. Working tonally, you can get quite a big variation just through changing the amount of water on your brush and changing the amount of paint you apply to the canvas. So all that's been done with just the one color. So now to get that bluey gray, I'm gonna be using some titanium white, a bit of phthalo blue, and a bit of burnt umber just to knock it back a touch. So just get a good mix of that on my brush and we'll give this area a quick spray so it's nice and loose and workable. And then just with our brush, we'll go in and start to work that gray blue color into our foreground. And where I've sprayed this, all that brown paint that I put on originally is now starting to blend together with that bluey gray. Using a nice big flat brush to drag the color across here, nice big bold marks. And while I'm working, I'm just thinking about the shape of the tiles on the floor, where the lines of perspective go. I've got some light coming down the edge here and, and coming in through these arches. I haven't really left that in, covered it up. So what I might do then is go in and lift some of the paint out. That's something you can always do with the Atelier Interactive is go in, give an area a spray with your water and then use an old rag and you can just go in and lift some of the paint out. So. Just for these areas of light here, I'm just gonna lift some of the paint away with a rag, just by spraying and rubbing the paint away. So you get these nice, soft sort of glows of light. Okay, so because I've been spraying that a lot, that area is fairly moist at the moment, so I'm gonna leave that to dry. And in the meantime, we'll go in to the area that's behind these arches. So you've got another part of the cathedral showing through, and this lawn area here in the foreground. So we'll try and work on them. And it's gonna be mostly Naples yellow with a touch of sap green, I think. And we'll see what that looks like. I don't want it to be too strong because I want this background to appear in the distance and to have lots of light coming through the top of these arches uh, and really creating that kind of silhouette effect. So. Let's just uh, go in with that and see what that looks like. That's not bad. So that runs just on the back here, moving down across those arches. So I'm just gonna quickly fill that area in with that green color. 
Not being too careful, just filling the whole area. Just mixing some of that blue into the green then. And I'm being fairly bold with my brush strokes, so there's a bit of visual texture. There's also in the distance here, some arches on the main part of the cathedral building showing through. So I want to suggest these, but not pick them out in too much detail, which is again, another way of making this whole area seem like it's glowing with light and silhouetting these arches. So what I'm going to do is just try and mix a pale bluey gray and use that to pick out some of these areas of detail very, very softly in the distance. Just gonna use some titanium white, tiny touch of burnt umber, and some phthalo blue. So, just some marks that are gonna suggest the main cathedral building here in the background. So, like I said earlier, I'm just sort of thinking about the drawing whilst I'm painting and just using my brush to create suggestions of these angles without painstakingly describing them. When you start to get these tones in and, and take away these areas of blank white, it also helps you to visualize the painting as a whole and you start to get a sense of what's working, what's not working, and how all the colors are standing up together. That's often why I encourage people to work the whole painting up at the same time, because if you do leave an area totally blank and then go and put color in it, that instantly affects the color relationship in the whole painting. An area that seemed dark before may not seem as dark when you put an area of color on somewhere that was white. So it is a good technique to try and work over a whole painting at the same time and then bring everything together at the last minute. So now I've got a bit of detail in the background here just a suggestion of the cathedral building behind the arches. I'm going to go in and work in some of the tables and chairs that are sort of in the foreground here, moving back into the distance. I'm just going to block these in very quickly to begin with, um, and then I'll go back to them at a later date and add some more detail work to them. But just as a starting point, we just want to get the suggestion of these being there. They're nice and dark, so just going to mix pretty dark colour, not black, but burnt umber and phthalo blue, so we've got a nice rich dark bluey brown. And then just with a big flat brush, I'm just going to block them in very quickly so we've got a rough idea of where they're going to be. Remember, they can all be changed and repositioned later, but we're just going to use that brush to make some marks, give us a suggestion of tables and chairs all the way down here in the background. Making sure my marks are in roughly the right place. And that dark bluey brown color that I've just been using, that's quite nice and rich. So I think I'll stick some of that in this column here as well. So I'm just gonna use a bit of that color in there. I often do that, I'll see an area of colour that I like and I think, oh, there's some of that colour there as well. So you can always move around the painting and edit other areas of colour at the same time. And if you want to blend them in, of course, spray and that will unlock the paint and allow you to blend new colours in. Just to integrate these into their surroundings a bit, stop them look like they're floating, I'm just gonna give this area underneath the chairs that I've just painted a quick spray with the water, uh, and that will allow me to drag some of the color out from the chairs and onto the floor. Just so they look like they're in shadow a bit. So this is kind of blocked in all the main elements of the painting. We've got our arches in. Remember, we just used that one color to get that tonal build up, blocking our arches. And then we've put some loose detail work in the background here showing through. And then we've just quickly blocked in where these tables and chairs 
and bits of detail are going to go. So what I'll probably do now is take a break from this painting, give it a day or two, keep having a look at it in the studio and see if there's any areas that I think I need to alter and perhaps do a bit more work on. Uh, and then I'll come back to it when I've done that and finish everything off with a bit more detail and some final glazing work.